Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilcox, did you or anyone in your organization communicate with the ATF or the Biden administration about these issues we are discussing today prior to the notice of proposed rulemaking? Uh, we submitted formal petitions for rulemaking through the appropriate channel, sir. Before the notice of proposed rulemaking? That's correct. So you were, you were in communication with the Biden administration wanting to make these changes? We filed formal petitions for rulemaking through the appropriate channels. Did you who did you talk to? I was a written submission, sir. Written, did, did you speak to anyone uh, personally? I didn't. Did anyone in your organization talk to anyone? Uh, I, I'd have to check, but I believe we submitted the written submission as a formal submission People through the People in your organization channels. may have talked to folks at the ATF prior to the notice of proposed rulemaking? Not that I'm aware. Did anyone in your organization talk to Mr. Dettelbach before the notice of proposed rulemaking? Uh, I don't believe Mr. Dettelbach had well, been nominated. He came in after. Anyone, have anyone talked to Mr. Dettelbach about this personally? Uh, of course, we've been in communication with the ATF in this administration and in prior administrations. Talking to the, the director? You've talked to the director? Uh, I mean, we've, we work with ATF across administrations. Have you talked to the director? It's a simple question. Uh, yeah, I've communicated with the director. You've talked to Mr. Dettelbach? Of course. Yeah. And, um, well, I find that interesting. I, I just know, as we're speaking upstairs, the, the president of the National School Board Association is sitting for a transcribed interview because the same thing happened there. National School Board Association talked with the Biden White House, the Biden Justice Department, the Biden Department of Education concocted this letter that set in motion this whole attack on parents showing up at school boards. And it looks to me like we have a similar operation going on here where you guys worked with the ATF to, to change something that had been the law for 10 years to go after law-abiding Second Amendment Americans, Second Amendment uh, uh, supporting Americans. Mr. Bosco, uh, you invented uh, this stabilizing brace, is that right? That's correct. And you invented it for a Marine buddy, a friend of yours who served our country and was injured? That's correct. And you were told 10 years ago that the stabilizing brace does not convert a pistol into a short barreled rifle. Is that right? That is correct. I got yeah. the letter right here from the ATF, November 26, 2012, right? And then seven weeks ago, 180 degree change, right? 180 degree change, just the opposite. They now say it is just the opposite of what they told you 10 years ago. That's Again, just to, I know others have talked about this, but I think it's so clear. 180 degree change. So in 10 years and two months, the rule was one way, and you developed a business based on the rule that they told you. Your government told you this was fine, and now they've changed it. That's correct. When did the bill pass that changed the law? There was no bill. No bill. That's the fundamental issue, right? No bill. Mr. Dettelbach, the new director, he never ran for Congress. I don't think he was ever, I don't remember a bill going through Mr. Nadler's committee last Congress that changed the law. I would have known because I'm on that committee, the Judiciary Committee, which has jurisdiction over this stuff. I would have known, I don't remember a bill passing the full Congress. I don't remember a bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee passing or going through the Senate. And I certainly don't remember a bill going to President Biden's desk and he signing the legislation that changed the rule. But this could potentially impact millions of Americans, law-abiding, Second Amendment supporting Americans. Is that right, Mr. Bosco? That's absolutely correct. How many products have you sold just your company alone to Americans? How many stabilizing braces have you sold? Many millions. I can say that from 2020 to today, which are the, day, the, the years that the ATF didn't concern itself with when it did its impact study, we sold our company alone 2.3 million braces. So while they were doing their study, they didn't count the number of braces that were being sold? They, they, they didn't count in their impact study. That's probably because Mr. Wilcox's organization told them not to count it, right? I don't want to. Well, they were talking to him all the time, it yeah. sounds like, putting this all together, going after people who support the Second Amendment. How many Americans do you think it's total? So I've heard estimates as many as 40 million Americans could be impacted by this? Correct. Correct. Congressional Research Services has said anywhere between 10 and 40 million Americans own stabilizing brace. Unless you remove the brace, lengthen the barrel, turn in or destroy your firearm or register your gun with this government that you know you can trust because Mr. Wilcox has been working with them, you know you can trust. Unless you do those four things, what happens? What are you? A felon. A felon. A felon for something 10 years ago they said was just fine. That you build a business on and the business started because you wanted to help a man who put the uniform of his country on his back and served our country and was injured. And now they're going to put you out of business and make people felons. But don't worry, every town USA, this, Mr. Wilcox has been working with our government to implement this to target Second Amendment people, Americans who support the Second Amendment. Such a deal, such a deal. That's why we need legislation to say this rule does, 
we need to pass that. That's what we do need to pass into law now based on what has happened with this organization. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.